Hello everybody and welcome to World of Warcraft Classic. I actually started playing WoW when I was 21 years old and the year was 2005. We were a little ways into 2005. I'd actually just lost a job that I had expected to be at for quite a while and I was back in school and I was back to working part time. And a friend of mine who had played since launch finally convinced me to take those five CDs and install them onto my computer. And the rest is kind of history. To me, World of Warcraft is always going to have a special place in my past and in my own personal history because prior to WoW, I had actually stopped playing video games entirely. I had made the conscious decision that I wasn't going to anymore and I had sold my game systems, my PS2, my GameCube, as well as my entire collection of video games uh, basically that I'd been collecting since I was, you know, a child. And so WoW brought me back into what had been a lifelong hobby and what continues to be a lifelong hobby. So I'll always be grateful for that. Um, I played during vanilla. I played during all the expansions. Probably the least amount of playtime I put into an expansion was Pandaria. As far as doing any kind of raiding or dungeon content. But yeah, I'm really excited to get in. We are going to go with a Night Elf Warrior for this series. I'm going to be focusing on just immersing myself in this world that we've all remember from so long ago. I'm going to be reading the quest and just really having a good time with it. When things get boring or tedious, long runs, long grinds, and long kill chains, I'll probably edit some of that stuff out, uh, but keep most of the core commentary and the you know exciting parts and the quest bits, story bits. I'm hoping to eventually do some dungeons on our warrior. Now, warrior was the first class that I actually got to 60, but it was a Tauren warrior. So mainly I've played Horde. This will be my first time going all the way through uh, in a classic era with the Alliance. I played a lot of Alliance on and off after Cataclysm, but before Cataclysm, not so much. So with nothing else to say about me, let's go ahead and get right in, shall we? For 10,000 years, the immortal Night Elves cultivated a druidic society within the shadowed recesses of Ashenvale Forest. Yet recently, the catastrophic invasion of the Burning Legion shattered the tranquility of their ancient civilization. Led by the arc druid Malfurion Stormrage and the priestess Tyranda Whisperwind, the mighty Night Elves rose to challenge the demonic onslaught. Though victorious, the Night Elves were forced to sacrifice their cherished immortality and watch their beloved forests burn. Seeking to regain their immortality, a number of wayward druids conspired to plant a special tree that would link their spirits to the eternal world. Despite Malfurion's warnings that nature would never bless such a selfish act, the druids planted the great tree Teldrassil off the stormy coasts of northern Kalimdor. Within the twilight boughs of the colossal tree, the wondrous city of Darnassus took root. However, the great tree was not consecrated with nature's blessing and soon fell prey to the corruption of the Burning Legion. Now the wildlife and even the limbs of the great tree itself are tainted by a growing darkness. As one of the few Night Elves still left in the world, it is your sworn duty to defend Darnassus and the wild children of nature against the Legion's encroaching corruption. And see, right off the bat, I didn't know any of that stuff about Teldrassil. Having the problems that it's having, not being consecrated, I didn't actually know any of that stuff. And so just to set the time frame here, we're two days after launch, so it's August 28th, 2019, and the game went live... Uh, for me, it went live at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time on the 26th. So I played on launch day. I'm actually rolling a priest as my main character, a human priest. And so that way I'll get to experience uh, different leveling areas in this playthrough that's going on YouTube and then my personal playthrough, which I might stream sometimes, but otherwise is not going to make it to YouTube. And so you'll see that there's like probably going to be a lot of people in the beginning areas, but not as much as on day one. So I wanted to wait a couple days to start this series. 
a lot of interesting things happen when so many players are in one place, but sometimes uh, it makes life a little challenging. But it's really cool. You'll see how people form groups organically. Uh, and it's been a lot of fun in a very, very social, natural social way. Uh, let's get in here. Greetings. I am Conservator Ilthalane. My purpose in Shadowglen is to ensure that the balance of nature is maintained. The spring rains were particularly heavy this year, causing some of the forest beasts to flourish while others suffered. Unfortunately, the night saber, thistle boar the night saber and thistle boar populations grew too large. Shadowglen can only produce so much food for the beast. Journey forth, young warrior, and thin the boar and saber populations so the nature's harmony will be preserved. So we gotta kill some boars. We gotta kill some night sabers. It's been great not having any quest markers. I am playing totally add-on free. I won't be using any add-ons um, at all. I Even when I raided, I only used the bare minimum add-ons that were required by my guild. Uh, and unfortunately, that guild no longer plays WoW, so I don't really have a group of people to play with at the moment. Eventually, I will find a guild to join to do some raiding. But right now, I'm just uh, I'm on my own, except for the people that we meet out in the world here and that we choose to group with. But it's been great not having uh, quest markers and having to find things on your own by reading the quest. Although I'm sure a lot of people are really familiar with all these quests. Uh, we have another quest here from uh, Melathar Staghelm, the Woodland Protector. Thank goodness you are here, warrior. Strange news has traveled to me through the whisperings of the forest spirits. The mysterious Woodland Protector, Terendrella, has returned to Shadowglen. The Dryad's presence has not been felt in the forest of Kalimdor in years. Something is surely amiss if she has journeyed back to this land. Seek out Terendrella and see what business she tends to in our grove. One of the sentinels reported seeing her to the southwest of Eldrassil. So, paying attention to the directions that it tells us to go. Also very important. And if we want to track these, we have to actually open our log. And we can shift-click the ones that can be tracked over here. And so, they should be right around in this area. And... She is to the southwest. So we could head kind of southwest and see what wildlife we come across. It might be worth inviting some of these folks. Because it is a, a kill quest. But not everybody wants to be in a group. So we'll see. Oh, here she is. She's not far at all, actually. What is nature's call? I see you found me, young Night Elf. Melithar is a wise druid to have sent you. Something evil is brewing in the forest of Teldrassil. Look long the look long the hills to where the peaceful Firbolgs used to dwell. They have deserted their homes and are amassing under the name of the Gnarl Pine Tribe. Only the corruption of wicked Felmoss could cause such a transformation. The Grells and Grelkin have infested the area and are threatening the residents of Shadowglen. Engage these Grells and Grelkin and see if they are indeed caught under the enchantment of the wicked Felmoss. So lots of bad stuff happening to the wildlife and indigenous populations here right off the bat. I'm going to take auto attack off the bar. We don't need that. We have heroic strike that we start with. And this is a strong attack that increases melee damage by 11 and causes a high amount of threat. And so we have our rage meter. This is going to cost 15 Rage, so to build up Rage, we're either going to be getting Rage from our White Swings, or we're going to be getting Rage from being hit. Let's change a couple of interface settings. Uh, nope. Let's go with Auto Loot. We want Auto Loot on, just Quality of Life stuff. That wasn't in Classic, I don't believe, but they kept some Quality of Life stuff in. I want some additional Action Bars. I don't want them locked. Okay, that should be good for now. So we need Felmoss as well. Look long to the hills. We'll find them. Let's focus on getting some of these uh, boar that we need. And we need to find some night sabers too.
Now, as a warrior in vanilla, we're not going to have any self-healing, except for our natural regen. It's going to be important right away that we uh, stockpile food so that if we need to heal between battles, we'll be doing that by eating food. And we're going to pick up first aid, which will allow us to turn cloth into bandages. So here are the Grelkin. Got some people over here kind of farming them, so let's get some more thistle bores and we'll tag whatever we can. Now there's no mob sharing in the classic, so if uh, bon T Bonita here tags something, it's going to turn gray for me. I can attack it after that, but I'm not going to get any experience, I'm not going to get any items, unless we are in a group. And in a group, if we're looking for quest items, we don't share them. So if we're killing for uh, Felmos and a monster drops one, only one person in the group is going to get to loot that quest item. It's not going to be shared amongst everyone in the group. So it's it's very different. It takes When you group up for item quest, it takes a little bit longer, but the benefit is you can tag mobs more efficiently if you can spread out within your group. And so, as I said, any quest that takes, like, way too long to accomplish, I will do fade in, fade out, so you get kind of the general idea and some clips of the quest completion, but not necessarily having to watch the entirety of every single quest as we go forward, because some of them will take quite a long time. Kind of interested if, like, these people want to group up. And what I do is, like, when I go to an area, I just throw out some invites to people that seem like they're doing the same the same things. And I just kind of see who wants to get into a group, so... It just helps out. Like, it does. It's really fun to be able to play with other people. And when areas are more populated, it helps you tag mobs. Like, there's not a lot of people here right now. It's middle of the day. Central time, so... Not peak time. Oh, that's level 2. You'll notice that when you hit level, it's uh, much more subtle than when you ding a level nowadays where your whole screen lights up, you get a giant thing on your screen, it tells you what new abilities you automatically learned. We're not going to be learning any abilities automatically in Classic, we're going to have to go back to our trainer anytime we want to train new abilities or higher ranks of abilities. Uh, also, you'll see we have a couple of things going on over here. Our skill in defense and swords is increasing. So as we swing our sword, we are leveling up our sword skill. Uh, as we get hit, we're leveling up our defense skill. As a warrior, we're going to be using melee weapons. Obviously, it's going to be really important that we keep all of our weapon types relatively skilled up. What happens is if I equip a weapon I don't have enough skill in compared to my target, I am going to be missing attacks and dealing less damage if I am hitting until I get my weapon skilled up to the appropriate level. So right now we're starting with a sword, but we will be getting other or weapon types, axes and maces. And we'll always want to equip what's best for us, but again if we don't have the skill, then it's not going to help us very much. Uh, right now we have a sword and board, which is good for right now because the, the shield is going to stop us from taking excessive damage. Eventually we may switch that up to a two-hander. We'll have the option to dual wield one-handers. So we have a lot of combat versatility as a warrior. What we don't have is a lot of survivability. I'm going to turn V-bars on for now. Let me know if you guys find the, the V-bars annoying. They don't have a large radius, so... If things are too far away, the V-Bars won't even show up until you're right on top of them, basically. Let's get a good look at these Grelkin that we're fighting here. I do have all my graphical settings turned up pretty high. You know, because while it is classic, it's 2019, the game defaults you to kind of a faux classic graphical setting, but let's be honest, like, no computer today is anything like computers that ran the game back originally. Like, I believe my cell phone could probably run the original WoW client. 
uh, because that's how much technology has changed. So I have things like the uh, gra the details up pretty high for the environment and stuff like that. I just like the way it looks. Not enough rage. Need more rage. Need more rage. You'll probably hear that a lot. Okay, so that was actually really easy to get all the fell moss we needed. Much easier than some of the collection quests on the uh, human side that I played the last couple of days. But we still need to find a bunch of these night sabers. I'm wondering if they're stealth. Be very interesting for like in the first area for them to have stealth enemies. Oh look, there's one. Oh, this guy's gonna get it. Let's see if uh, we can invite this guy to the group. Seems to be doing something similar. There we go. And now we'll get credit for kills. So for kill quest especially, you just it's it pays to be in a group. You gotta watch your range and make sure you stay in the right area. Maybe he needs some of these. I don't really need them anymore, but can help him out. Uh, killing everything in your way is also important in in classic because a lot of times the the zones won't have enough quests to sufficiently level you to go to the next zone, which means if you could do all the quests in a zone, go to the next zone and find yourself out leveled in that zone by the enemies and by the quests. So killing everything in your way is just going to get you extra experience and could be like a, the tipping points between being ready for the next zone and being woefully underpowered for it. Now here's where people are doing some tagging. Hopefully being in a group will help us. Uh, he got that one. So it's gray. Not really a reason to attack it. That guy tagged it. So he tags it. It turns gray. Here's... Oh, this is a boar. Well, it's fine. Let's get some experience. As far as professions on this character, I think I'm going to do alchemy and herbalism. Because potions are going to be very important. I'd like to be able to make my own. I'd love to be able to make my own gear. Um, and that would require mining and smithing. But I, I think I'm actually going to go alchemy and herbalism. That way I'll be helpful to other people in group situations. I'll be able to make potions uh, for other folks. And I think that'd be a really useful thing to bring to the table. So what, who is this guy? This guy is... he's a hunter. And he has a dagger. That's very interesting that his first equipped weapon is a dagger. I gotta check this out. Oh, he does have a bow. He has a bow, but he's not using it. I love it. There's nothing more classic than seeing a hunter in melee. And like, that might be the best way for him to go right now. I don't know. I'll let him get some practice in with his dagger. I thought he was a rogue at first. But he's a hunter. <laughs> that's that's vanilla for you. That's the interesting thing about the game is that World of Warcraft Classic is not just bringing current WoW players to the table, it's bringing back people who played in vanilla or played in BC and then quit. And they had a Blizzard account, so Blizzard did a massive campaign for awareness. So this is bringing back people to the game potentially who haven't played in years. It's bringing in new people who have never played and this will be their first exposure. And I think how cool is that for a new player, for your first exposure to be something like really close to the original experience. That's a really great opportunity for those players to have. As opposed to jumping into the mess that is current Battle for Azeroth. Let's see, we have everything we need. Um, We'll thank this guy. And we will leave group. What brings you? Let's see, another quest here from uh, Durania Silvershine, a good friend. A friend of mine named Ivoron usually visits me at the same time every day. The strange thing is that he hasn't been by today at all. He's several hours late, in fact. I admit, I am a little worried. Ivaron spends a lot of time over by the cave to the north, and I'm sure you know how dangerous it is there. Spiders everywhere. If you happen to be going that way, though, will you keep an eye out for him? Uh, cave to the north. Got it. We're on it.
but we do need to probably run back over here and turn in some of our quests. So let's get on that. As far as I'm thinking about the length of these episodes, they'd probably be a little bit longer than typical, maybe 45 minutes after some editing. Um, neither of these are ideal for us, but the leather is going to be the best we can get right now. So let's go ahead and take the leather. Now, ideally, we'll be equipping chain until we can unlock plate at level 40. That's right. We're going to be wearing chain until we get to, I believe, level 40 when we unlock plate. So it's going to be very different if you're, if you've never played classic or if you've never played vanilla or BC, some things might seem very different. Simple sigil. The sigil was given to me by a messenger from our warrior trainer, Alicia. It seems Alicia would have words with you when you have a moment. Read it and bring it to her afterwards. So that's from our warrior trainer, who's going to be the one training us in new skills. Uh, but our inventory is full. This is a pretty good lesson to learn. We don't want our inventory to be full at any point. We want to be vendoring all of our junk, anything we are not going to use. Ooh, let's equip those. 17 armor over 2. Yeah. We'll take that. We don't have any kind of chest armor on at all, so we're just going to equip this for now. It looks stupid, um, but it's better than wearing nothing. Same there. Oh, look at that. That's a male belt. We are definitely going to wear that, even though it's gray. Again, it's ha it has 24 armor on it, um, which is a lot better than nothing. We have some shields that are going to be better. Let's... Put that busted up buckler on. And now we're looking classic. Okay. Greetings. May the star we can take that now. And let's take a look at it. I hope my sigil finds you well, warrior. I write to you because our people have need for those strong with a blade, the glaive, and all other weapons. So much has happened since our people have been reintroduced to the other races of Azeroth that we have an even greater need for protectors of all kinds. This is where you come in. I would tell you more, but I feel it should be in person. Find me inside Eldrassil on the lower levels. Alicia, warrior trainer. Uh, which is going to be right over there, so we'll head over there in a minute. The balance of nature. Thinning the younger population of creatures here in the Shadow Glen was a good start. But there is still work to be done. The resources of the forest will be depleted too quickly if the problem is not addressed. Killing nature's beast is a necessary evil for the good of all who share the land. Venture into the forest and slay mangy night sabers and thistle borers in the name of balance. So we are going to call some more population. Let's turn this quest in. We'll go vendor and we'll check out our trainer. And see if we have any new skills we can learn. Is there trouble? Your service to the creatures of Shadow Glen is worthy of reward. You confirm my fears, however. If the Grells have become tainted by the Fel Moss, one can only imagine what has become of the Naropine tribe of Furbolgs who once lived here. Should you find yourself in Dolinar, able warrior, seek out the knowledgeable druid Athridas Bearmantle. He shares our concern of the well-being of the forest. Uh, what do we want here? We definitely want the male, uh, the male feet. And there's level 3. Not bad. Let's equip those. And then we are headed back. Oops, there we go. Navigation. It's essential. You'll notice we have stances. We have a stance bar. Uh, we're in battle stance. It's the only stance that we have. As a warrior, we'll eventually get other class quests to unlock our berserker stance and defensive stance. And don't quote me on that order. Might be the other way around. Uh, this is a bowyer, but we can sell some of our junk. Now our trainer here, you can see that turn-ins, once you get close, they are marked on the mini-map. But they're marked by a tiny little dot instead of the blatant um, question mark turn-in that we're used to today, and they don't appear unless you're really close to where they're at. And quest givers don't appear at all in the minimap as icons. You just have to see them in the world. Let's take a look at our trainer here. 
You made it. I'm so glad. Much has happened over the last few years. The creation of Teldrassil, the corruption of many of the forest creatures here and abroad, discovery of lands we thought lost to us like Feralus. So much in so little time. But those are just some of the reasons we are here, the most important being to protect our kind from further evil. Soon you will see others from different races in the bows of our home. Do not let it cause any prejudice within you, they are welcome. They will aid us when they can. Not all of them will be altruistic, but they should be granted some amount of trust. But none of this matters now. We, are, we must focus on you and how you can aid our people. I am here for that very purpose. I will train you in the ways of a warrior as you become stronger. Return to me whenever you wish, and I will do what I can to aid you. Farewell. Okay, so can we learn anything at level 3? I'm sure we can learn something. We can learn Battle Shout. The Warrior Shouts, increasing the melee attack power of all party members within 20 yards by 15. Last 2 minutes. That's a good amount of time. So we'll go ahead and pick up Battle Shout. Uh, we're going to need that. We really want Charge, so Charge is level 4. That's going to help us out a lot as far as tagging mobs. But for now, uh, it's really good to have Battle Shout. Let's go ahead and we have to open our spell book. You'll notice that even though we learned a new spell, it didn't automatically put it on our action bar. We have to go into our spell book. And we'll find Battle Shout in the Fury page. We're going to pull that out. I'm going to set it uh, to this F1, which I have bound to my mouse. I have, uh, I'm using a mouse. I won't reveal the type, but it has a bunch of buttons on it and I like to use those. Uh, and, and the first four or five buttons of my keyboard. It really helps me out a lot to spread the abilities around between my mouse buttons and my keyboard buttons. Not enough. And I have the option to hit F1 on the keyboard too if I want to one-hand it. So uh, We need rage for this, so we can't do this until we get hit. We can't pre-buff with it. We have to cast it after we are already in combat. But it will increase our melee power... Uh, by 16, it's going to last two minutes, so we could probably get a few pulls in before we have to recast it. So definitely worth it. We have to find Mangy Night Sabers. And we have to check on her friend near a cave to the north. So if we head north, which is what we're going to do, we'll keep an eye open for any of the Mangy Cats. Oh, look, another quest. And see, again, it's not marking these on the minimap so that if you don't look around, you could miss quests. And you don't want to miss picking up quests. Because if you find them when it's too late, you'll be over level for them and you won't get experience or the maximum experience for them. Uh, Webwood Venom. I came to Shadow Glen to observe the Webwood spiders that dwell in the Shadow Thread Cave. They are cousin to a much smaller variety of spider. I believe the World Tree has had a profound effect on them, and I would like the specimens to study and confirm this. First, I would like some of their venom. Gather webwood sp venom sacks from spiders in and around the Shadow Thread Cave to the north. I can then examine them for similarities with their smaller cousin's venom. We can do that. We're going north anyway, so I kind of have a feeling that most of the things we're looking for are going to be around the same area. So we don't need young Thistlebore, we need regular old Thistlebore, full-grown adults at this point. A lot of Grelkin around here, which I probably should be killing. There's a Thistlebore, and I see some of the corpses. Let's see if Malfurion wants to uh, group up here. Yes, he does. If we get some Rage, we can give him Battle Shout. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. And he is also a hunter. And I swear he's also meleeing. What is going on with these hunters? Maybe they just like to melee. I'm not sure. They all have bows. But they're not using them. Maybe there's a good reason why. Maybe they're out of ammo. If you are a hunter in Classic, uh, ooh, hi. you need ammo to shoot your bow, so either arrows if you have a bow, or 
bullets if you're using a gun. Was he close enough to get that? Yeah, he got it. Okay. And we need venom from them. And again, the drop rates are pretty low, and when you're in a group, you take turns looting the quest items. So it's kind of important that your group is kind of pulling its weight and pulling more mobs and making sure that we're tagging stuff for us. Otherwise, you might as well solo it. There's a Venom Sack. Uh, you look like you're probably doing this quest. Some of these people just look like they're standing around doing nothing, but... Try to be nice to people. It's the best way to play. Let's run in here with our group mate. It's going to be better if we stick together so we can tag stuff and both loot it. Um, our other guy is somewhere. Let's see if we can invite this hunter who might be more useful to us. I basically just like to invite whoever I can if it's like a quest like this where we all need the mobs in a certain area, whether it's a kill quest or a collection quest. You might argue that if I'm not just on my own tagging my own, it's going to take longer to get all the items. But I don't really feel that way because we're going to be killing more stuff together. And with the population density the way it is, um, it's going to help us to be able to tag and compete with other groups that are in the area. Um... Like, let's uh, see, we tagged this one, and if not, Skinner would have tagged it, but... He's a hunter using a dagger, so he's got no chance against us. And our quick melee swing. Um, yeah, we could, um... Could all go this way. Looks like someone's got that corridor on lockdown. Up here, guys, up here. Let's go. I actually hate giant spiders more than almost anything. Like, this these, this guy's a manageable size. Like, if I had a sword in real life, I might take on a spider this size. Um, any bigger than this, though, and it's going to require something more drastic. Because <laughs> I hate, I hate spiders. Giant spiders, specifically. The hairier, the worse it gets. And this is some of the stuff that I might edit out some of the kills, but I really want every, you guys to get an idea of what it's like playing at this stage of release, because eventually... Uh, the servers are going to balance out, and there probably won't always be this many people playing simultaneously, especially at low levels, but... Skinner, do you want in, man? Like, maybe we should go back outside here and see if any are spawning, and then we can run back in. Uh, not really seeing any out here, but... What a lot of groups were doing is just kind of standing in, in kind of an area and spreading out a bit so that when some of them spawn, you can just kind of be ready. This actually has a really good drop rate comparatively. Kind of interested in what our groupie is doing over here. And the problem is if, if they kill anything too far away, we're not going to get credit for it and we're not going to be able to loot it. So that's kind of what becomes the problem is managing the group and seeing if everyone's actually engaging. Which usually isn't a problem. Look at that, I see this guy scurrying. Oh, nice shot, Skinner. 
So he's using his bow to pull, and then he's just meleeing it down. That that makes sense, because something I forgot about hunters that I just realized is that they have a minimum range in classic. Uh, they can't shoot when it's in their face. That makes perfect sense. They're all using their their daggers when the monster gets up close, because in classic as a hunter, you can't shoot point blank. You have to have range. So, and I totally forgot that. Not a big hunter player, but one of the first characters I leveled up to like 25 or 30 was a hunter. But I had completely forgot about the minimum distance to shoot a ranged weapon. Makes perfect sense now. And it is still very classic for hunters to have to do that, I guess. A lot of people like to stand in one place and wait for the mobs to respawn. I was in a group on my human. Uh, he had some kind of timer he knew, like, basically down to the moment. It was like eight minutes, he said. Down to the moment when the camps would respawn. It was interesting, but probably an add-on that he had. Look at this. They, when you have your graphics up and the, all this foliage is on, they are, like, hiding in the foliage. It's actually really cool. That's what I mean about the V-bars not appearing until you're really close. Uh, everyone has left our group. I guess we're fine just to do this one solo. Um, because we're having pretty good odds of identifying and tagging. On my priest, it was much harder to tag things on my own, and it really helped to have a melee character in there. Or I'd have to run up with my priest and swing my mace, which would result in me getting hit a lot, which as a priest you don't want to do. Oh, look at the respawn right here is a little wacky. Good for us. Gotta remember to keep our battle shout up. And that's the last one we need for this. And then we need the Thistle Boars and the Mangy Nightsabers. But we didn't really see any of them to the north here. And then we need to find a good friend. Over by the cave to the north. I wonder if this dude is actually back in the cave. Uh, this probably wasn't a great idea with such low health. Oh, we don't need it to be parrying our attacks. That's going to kill us. Uh, we might die here. Let's see. Oh, ho, ho. Three, three hit points. That was too close. We don't need to be doing that. But I wanted to tag her before anybody else did just to see what we can loot. But let's heal up. We gotta eat. Nothing. So we don't need her right now. I don't think this guy's body is in here. Oh, look at this. That tucked away back here. I have around. There's our friend. What brings you here? I'm so glad you found me. How did you know I was here? I, I didn't. I had to look. Oh, I was bitten very badly by a spider named Glythus. Get, get, we just killed her. The vial. While exploring the spider cave very close to here, I am sure I have been seriously poisoned. You must help me. Please tell Durania Silvershine. She will be able to help me. Hurry, I'm so dizzy. Okay, so we have to go back. That lady is probably going to want us to go get an anti-venom from the, the named spider we just killed, but at least we found the guy. And he was tucked right back here, and I just saw this little indenture between the mountains on the minimap, and I just thought, we have to go check that out. And that's where he was, so very cool. An actual sense of exploration in a 15-year-old game, um, that's a big win.
And that is the last of the Thistle Boars and Mangy Night Sabers we need to kill. Let's head back and turn in a friend in need and let Diryanya know that uh, someone is poisoned and it's not us. Oh dear, I was wondering why I hadn't seen Iberon yet today. I've always warned him about those spiders. It seems obvious, right? We may be able to help Ivoron, as I know of an antidote that should help with the poison. It requires some ingredients, though, before it can be made. I'll need hyanthsynth mushrooms. You can find these growing under trees, or you may collect them from the grells south of here. They seem to have taken a liking to them. I'll also need moon petal lilies, which only grow around watery pools. We did see a moon well. Uh, and some ponds. The last ingredient may prove the most difficult, from the very spiders that poison Ivoron. Collect Webwood Icker. Okay, so we d might not need to kill the named spider yet, but we do need Dead some other stuff. And we hit level 4, so we're going to go back to our trainer, and we're going to pick up uh, Charge. Which is going to help us out a lot. And it's just one of the funnest abilities in the game, in my opinion. Oh, she was down here somewhere, I thought. Back here, probably. There she is, Alicia. Ch teach us, oh master. Okay, we can actually get rend and charge. Uh, you'll notice something though, we don't quite have the silver, so we're gonna have to... <laughs> We're going to have to vendor uh, before we do anything. And we're going to need to make sure that going forward we keep our bags empty because everything that we can't loot is just silver that we're throwing away. Uh, we're going to equip these. Same thing here. Any upgrades we need to equip. Okay, that brings us up to two silver. Farewell. I'm hoping that will get us charge and rend. We're going to have to be careful about what abilities we train. So we're only going to be training abilities that are, at first that are going to be immediately useful because we need to save our silver. Uh, but we need rend and we need charge. So charge an enemy, generate nine rage, and stun it for one second. So we are getting immediate rage. We are stunning the target. We are traversing an expanse of, of ground, um, which is great for tagging. And then Rend wounds the target, causing him to bleed for 15 damage over 9 seconds. So just, it's a dot. It's going to be great. Let's go ahead and put these on our action bar. I'm going to change the keybind for that so it makes more sense, but that's where it's going to go. And Rend's going to go there. I think this is going to be a good time to take a break here. And when we come back, we're going to go kill some more spiders. I got to turn this in. That's what I have to do. So we'll turn that in. We will kill some more spiders. Uh, we also have to collect a bunch of things for Ivoron's antidote. So that's what we'll be working on soon. I need to go turn these in. And I believe we're right over here to turn them in. There we go. You ha Again, you have to be pretty close for the turn-ins to appear on your map. The worst thing is just to forget where a quest turn-in goes <laughs> and to have it complete in your log. Thank you. When I return to Darnassus, I will compare the venom with these sacks with the venom of other spiders. It is my belief that it will have properties linked to the recent growth of our new world tree. Okay, so here we have some options. These are all one hand though, so that's fine. We're currently equipping a sword. It's just more damage. As much as I would love to level up a mace, I think I'm going to stick with the sword just for the damage. By level up the mace, I mean to level up our mace our mace weapon skill so that later when we get a really good mace, we can actually hit with it. Because if you don't build up that weapon skill by swinging, you're, you're not going to hit. Uh, now that I have the spider's venom, I'd like some live specimens to study. Unfortunately, capturing a living giant spider is more than I can ask of you, young warrior. And a giant spider is more than I can handle myself. 
but if you can find it unhatched egg, then delivering specimens will be much easier, and I can ar then arrange for the unhatched spiders to be contained. There must be a nest deep in the Shadow Thread Cave. Please search for an egg in the nest and return it to me. We saw eggs around where the named spider was at, and we can get a uh, shield upgrade out of this with a heck of a lot more armor. So, goodbye. Definitely looking forward to doing that. And then Conservator Ithilane, turning in balance in nature. You have proven your decision, your dedication to nature well. A young warrior like yourself has a promising future. Um, I don't need either of these, so it's just what's going to sell for more is probably going to be the belt. And yeah, that's good. Now we've got our two quests for next time. We need to go back into the cave for the egg. We need to get some ichor f from webwood spiders as well we're looking for moon petal lilies and mushrooms uh i thought this would give us rested but it's not what i thought it was i thought we could get rested experience from being in here but perhaps we have to go deeper or maybe there is no rested right in this area you know i don't think there is that's uh, classic for you. So we're going to take a break here. I hope you guys are having fun with this one. Let me know any thoughts, comments uh, you have below. I would really appreciate any feedback. I'm planning to do more content for Classic WoW. Uh, it's going to be this playthrough. It could be other playthroughs. It could be dungeon guides. Uh, I'm planning a lot of stuff. So I'm really excited about the release of Classic if you guys are interested in WoW Classic content, if you like the video, I'll only ask for it once since it's the first part of the series here. If you could give me a like and consider subscribing, that would really help me out a lot. Really appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you again real soon. Bye now.